Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. This is part two of the uh, learning KiCad or KiCad from an Eagle user's perspective. And in the last video, uh, we put together this uh, very simple board here. I know the wiring looks, the, the connection look rather ugly, but I... I'm just throwing this together. This isn't going to be, you know, something that we take into the into production or whatnot. But uh, what we saw in the last video is we uh, designed a symbol for the the SPIC 12F615. We added a couple of connectors and a capacitor, and this connector over here, which will eventually end up P1, and that's what we'll uh, look at today is going to be the programming header. So the idea being is that you can pluck this out of the uh, breadboard, plug the picket directly into this, and go ahead and uh, program the whole thing. Now that we've gotten it this far, that we have all of our symbols, and uh, we have all of our uh, wires or nets, whatever you want to call it, connecting everything, next we have to do annotations. As I mentioned previously, this P question mark, C question mark, and whatnot, uh, get taken care of at a later time after you create your schematic. So what you do is you go up to this button here and that's annotate schematic components. Go ahead, uh, click on that. Uh, this menu comes up and we're just going to leave it as is, but you can choose how stuff gets annotated and whatnot. And when you hit annotate, it will say annotation component, you know, annotate, oh, wait, annotate only the un annotated components in the entire schematic. This operation will change the current annotation and cannot be undone. Yeah, we know, so we can hit OK. And we can see that P1, U1, C1, P2 all appear. Now that our annotations are complete, we can go ahead and generate a netlist. To do that, there's this button generate netlist up here. And we're just going to do PCB new default format. We really don't change anything here. Hit generate. It will ask you where you want to generate the netlist because it does create a file. This is that file is the linking between a schema and PCB new. And it's going to be in our project directory here. So we can hit save. And after that, we need to create our associations with our parts. Let's go ahead and grab the, uh, now we run the uh, CV PCB to assign components and footprints like that. And this menu comes up here. It does take a hot second to load because uh, something that uh, KiCad does is it actually goes online to uh, get the, these uh, components and whatnot. So the, the footprints actually exist in the GitHub directory. So we only have four components here. And uh, let's do the capacitor first here. Uh, the What we have up here are uh, filters that you can apply to uh, the libraries which are here on the left. And here on the right you see the um, the parts. So we can unselect all the filters like that. And we know the capacitor, we want to use a surface mount. So capacitor is SMD. And by pin count, by library, like that. We want to enable the library filter. And so over here, it filters it by library. And uh, then we can enable this filter footprint list by pin count, which for capacitors, it's not really going to change anything. But uh, what, looking through the list here, what we see is we have a, a, a C0805 or a C0805 hand soldering. And the really neat uh, feature of uh, KiCad is that it lets you if you hit this button up here, you can view the selected footprint. So let me try and arrange this a little nicer. So if I, as I click on these, you can see the difference between the footprints here. Uh, if we look at the hand soldering one, the pads are just a little longer to give you a little extra room to slip in the soldering iron. Although if you're crafty enough, you can probably hand solder uh, a regular footprint. And 
if we look at this, uh, let me click over to the footprint editor here. If you look right down here, you have DX and DY and X and Y. X and Y give you your uh, location on the field. So if I bring it here to the middle, X and Y become all zeros. In this case, DX and DY become all zeros, but DX and DY are relative. And if you wanted to measure a component footprint, you can, let's say, bring it here and hit spacebar. And you can see DX and DY uh, zeroed out. And then bring it over this way like that. And we can see that a DX is uh, 0.118 inches. If you look up here, inches is selected as their units instead of millimeters. If we wanted to see that in millimeters, we can go like that. And it is a 3 millimeters long we would like to use the hand soldering one let me bring this back over here and so i have c selected up here in hand soldering select the, the, yeah, down here and when i double click uh, the uh, com capacitor here gets associated with this footprint and we can do the same thing for the this pic 12f615 if we go down here and you're going to have to bear with me because I don't rem exactly remember the library off the top of my head. The a resistors SMD, it's a, it took me a hot minute to find the library last time I did this. Let's try SMD packages. There we go. So under SMD packages, let me turn the... Uh, uh, footprint count off. You have all of these uh, different SOICs and SMDs and PQFPs and uh, SSOPs and whatnot. And when I let me filter it by pin count, this 8 pin package, we have a SOIC 8, which is what we're going to be using. We also have, let me look at the package here like that. And we also have a DIP 8. We look at that and the dip 8 is the in the smd library and so we want to use the soic 8 actually before we even do that let's oops, let's do some double checks with our tool here we're still in millimeters and we want to pull open the data sheet here a microchip puts all of their footprints at the end of the library here let me scroll up a little bit This is the uh, DFN package, DFN, MSOP, and what we're looking for is this guy right here, SOIC. And so some of the stuff to look for is like C, for example, the pin to pin center spacing, and C here is 5.4 millimeters. And so we can jump over to our package here and we're already in millimeters so we can hit here hit space bring it back over this way and we are actually at let's see 6.3 like that which is it's a it's a little on the wider side but i think we'll be okay that extra millimeter isn't going to hurt us because we're still Oops, uh, space edge to edge here we're at 5.2 yeah that looks like it should be okay let me go back over here I guess nominal this way is 5.4 uh, E is the spacing between pads and E here is 1.27 we can go ahead and double check that space so 1.2 and I can't quite yeah about 1.27 perfect you know we have eight pins and one two three four five six seven eight that works for me and go ahead and double click come on double click on this guy and now it's associated here and then we can hit save Oh, there we go and close out of this let me go to the schema here 
Now for the connectors, I wanted to specifically make a footprint library, and that is where we'll uh, pick up uh, next time. I wanted to keep these videos on the shorter side. The last video kind of got away from me. I think we were up to about a half an hour, maybe closer to 40 minutes. I haven't edited it together yet, so I don't know the exact uh, length of the video. But uh, thank you for watching. As always, if you have any questions, you're welcome to comment down below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video on how to put together a, a, li uh, a library footprint.